Welcome viewers, this is Winch here. Hope you're all uh, living the dream. Today's lesson I want to talk about is suppressors. And why they are so important in this game. And uh, as a general statement, a general consensus conclusion I can draw in my observation on day-to-day -day gaming on various public lobbies, both on PC and uh, console scrubbing. Um, what I'm noticing is that people aren't running with them anymore. Now we all know, you can see a range of clips here by the way, uh, from uh, Metro to Caspian Border to Grand Bazaar, uh, various game modes. But but if you can think back, I know it was a long time ago, it was about two years ago, uh, when the game wasn't patched as much as it has, and we've seen the evolution of Battlefield 3 uh, in its post-patch era. But in the pre-patch early stages when everything was OP and everybody was all raising cane about everything, Everybody cried about suppressors, and it, strictly speaking, from from a, a standpoint, you could argue that there really wasn't much reason to run with them because, excuse me, there wasn't much reason to run with anything else but a suppressor because you really didn't see any kind of uh, degradation in your in your accuracy and in the the uh, bullet damage and all that stuff. So as the game progressed, the developers try to balance out some attachments and make it more. Uh, more beneficial to consider all our attachments. The flash suppressor now pretty much has the most uh, greatest effect on your weapon for reducing uh, vertical recoil. Um, so that's kind of what the gear that attachment for. The heavy barrel basically allows you to increase your accuracy uh, and also increase your bullet penetration and your power and, and all that stuff. Or basically give your bullet the max amount of damage uh, over the longest distance. And that's what everybody pretty much runs today. You'll see you basically grip, no grip combination, but a heavy barrel is pretty much what everybody runs on any weapon, whether it's engineer, whether it's uh, assault class, whether, you know, a lot of support class guns, a lot, uh, kind of like the, I guess, the lighter LMGs like the M27, the L86, that's pretty much what you want to throw on it there too. And even on the recon class, uh, the heavy barrel is, has uh, expanded its horizons to include the SKS. Uh, which I guess is technically only gun in the recon class. I'd like to see on the M417. I think it should be on there. But we're not here to talk about the, the heavy barrel so much as just to compare it to the suppressor. And I'm trying to remind you, I'm going to show you three different weapons in all these gameplays, and they're all using the suppressor. As you notice here, I'm using on the uh, M240 Bravo. And typically in the past, I kind of scoffed at this idea, but um, as, as with anything in Battlefield 3, my gameplay has evolved and my tactics have changed and I, I constantly reanalyze my tactics and strategy and my loadouts on a day-to-day -day basis. I never know what gun I'm going to run with. As you guys know, I've made videos about this before. Uh, I'm typically a master of many weapons and uh, in th in that being they have a, a lot of kills with a lot of weapons but I, I really don't consider myself a master of any gun. I don't feel like there's any one gun that I can really marry in this game and just want to use it solely, like your M16A3, like you see everybody running. And by the way, you won't see any Assault Class gameplay in this footage. I apologize for that, uh, Assault Class lovers. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of other people out there that can uh, uh, go on about that. But let's talk about... Ooh, what's up, Knife Trolls? Yes, uh, that's another story. The Suppressor. Now, a common misconception a lot of people have with this attachment is that it reduces your... Uh, weapons damage output. Now that's that's a false assumption. What really you got to you got to reverse your psychology with suppressor. What it's really doing is basically it, it's it's your bullets doing the same amount of damage. It's just doing it at either a uh, greater distance or a smaller distance. And I'm not really explaining that well, but the best way I can do is maybe to provide some some quick stat references to, like, say, the Scar 8, which you're going to see here in a moment with the uh, suppressor and no grip. Uh, I still don't know whether to run with that gun with or without a grip. It changes day-to-day -day basis. But let's just assume no grip combination. Again, that's that's really not an argument. It's, it's, a, it's a moot point in this. But the Scar H, for example, does a maximum of 30 damage, a minimum of 20 damage. All right. Now, with a heavy barrel, you can do uh, you can do a significant amount, not not the 30 max damage, but the bullet trails down to its 20 minimum. The actual minimum amount of damage the weapon can do is 20 damage, and it'll do that all the way out to a range of uh, 70 meters with a heavy barrel on. Now, with a suppressor on, it can only do 30. Or excuse me, it can only do 20 damage. Uh, it starts doing 20 damage immediately 
at uh, 30 meters. So if we go from 70 meters doing 20 damage, basically you're doing over 20 damage up to 70 meters. And now when you throw a, a suppressor on there, now you're doing 20 damage right at 30 meters all of a sudden. So half your distance, over half your distance, you're doing your lowest amount of damage possible. Uh, and then of course this translates to just about any gun with a couple exceptions. We'll get to that a little later. But okay, so you think, wow, you know, I'm only, now I'm doing my the absolute minimum damage my weapon can do at half the range compared to heavy barrel. Well, that sounds like a terrible deal. I'll stick with the heavy barrel. Well, let's think about these numbers a little bit. How far really is 20 meters? Okay, well, 20 meters, I, I'm not a European, and I don't know metrics and stuff like that. So, well, for us Americans, 20 meters is about 96 feet, just under 100 feet. Well, I mean, that's pretty far. If, if you were to think about that, if you play football, I didn't. But, uh, if you, you know, football yards, 100 yards. So you think about that, uh, 96 feet equates to about 32 yards. Uh, you're just over a third of a football field. Look at that guy trying to nitro on the spawn beacon. No, no, no. So a third of a football field. Okay, well, what about the heavy barrel? It, it does, it's, the, the weapon will do its minimum damage for the Scar H. 20 damage up to 70 meters, which equates to 224 feet. That's pretty far. Uh, so that's 73 yards. So that's three quarters of a football field. But look at these engagements. Do you see what I'm getting at here? If there's, Have you observed something in the gameplay? I don't know about you, but I'm not shooting guys uh, three quarters of a, of a way down a football field all day long. Most of my engagements um, are, are in the nitty gritty, up front in your face, close and personal. Obviously you saw that in Operation Metro, uh, Caspian Border. Let's just talk about Team Deathmatch. I mean, if you're playing Team Deathmatch, is there any reason why you shouldn't have a suppressor on your gun? I'm starting to think in all my hours of gameplay, there's really absolutely no reason at all that you should not have a suppressor on your weapon because your engagements aren't that far. For the most part, you're doing, I would say, 60-70% of your kills. Well, perfect example right here. I mean, how far is that? That's right at my, uh, that's got to be under uh, 96 feet, I'd say. I mean, that's, I'm doing over, be somewhere between 20 and 30 damage. Now, I can't remember whether. The 30, I think the 30 goes out to 10 meters. It's pretty short. But for the most part, you're not going to notice it. It's going to be a five bullet kill gun for the Scar Age. And I'm just using this as an example. Just any gun. But the bigger picture here, if there's anything I want to drive home to you guys, is the tactical advantage of having suppressor. Obviously, you're not on the mini map. And let me tell you, I'm a mini map whore. I mean, that's all I do. Up Some days I think I play more off this game just looking at that little blue mini map than I actually do looking up front down my sights. It's almost like I am watching that uh, as I move through the map like my little grid. I mean, that's that's all I look at, and I'm not the only one. Uh, mini map people, that's that's what good players do. I mean, we keep our eyes glued to that screen. It's a huge advantage to you tactically when you observe somebody behind you, uh, somebody on your flank, a whole group of guys on your flank. They all light it up with their shots or whatever. So. When you don't have that on your screen, it does miracles for your gameplay. I'll tell you right now, I don't know how many times I'm just shooting the enemy one after another after another. I'm reloading between these shots because you can see my aim. And I'm just like, how do these guys, why aren't they looking at me? And then it occurs to me, oh yeah, I got a suppressor on my gun. That's why these guys look like complete noobs. They're not noobs. Look at these players. A lot of these players are really good players. Uh, but they, but they just fall victim to their own, uh, their own, I don't know if it's a weakness or not. It's just it's just what we take credit for. A lot of you guys out there, a lot of good players, really uh, take for granted the fact that people don't like suppressors on the gun. I myself have preached it for a long time. I don't like suppressors. I don't like suppressors. Well, I find out, and more often than not, anytime I put a suppressor on my gun, my gameplay improves two, three-fold. And, and that's an observation... It's taken me a long time to realize it. Look at this range shot. Plink, plink, plink away. How far away was that guy? Football fans, I mean, that looked like 100 yards to me. So even then, it still looked like about a five-shot kill there in that, that, that range engagement with the suppressor on the Scar H. Uh, and this, again, works You saw with the uh, M240 Bravo. Um, the other weapons I want to talk about, they're kind of unique to uh, the class. And look at this guy. The parachute guys tra trailing in. Um, the ACR, I, in the engineer class, I want to mention this. It, it is one of the unique guns in, in the engineer class that you, if you put a suppressor on that gun, 
Most LR near class weapons are doing like 14 damage. The, the ACR, I believe, is doing more than that. It's, it's, I think it's 16 damage, so it's doing slightly more. Uh, and it's going to basically be a 6 bullet kill at range as opposed to a 7. I mean, that 7 bullets is a lot of damage. So you got to keep that in mind too. If you got a suppressor in a gun and you're running like an engineer weapon, uh, 7 bullets to kill is a lot of bullets. And look at this, how I'm stalking this guy. I'm trying to get me a gun here because I'm out of ammo because we know we can't get support guys to do it. So finally kind of objectivize my situation. Took that guy with grenades, saw this guy running around, figured I'd try to take care of him stealthily. Picked up his gun, I was like, alright, SKS, we got it. 11 kill streak or 13 kill streak got going on right here and then he gets shot in the back. It's like, dang it. He got 13. Uh, so the, uh, the ACR is kind of a wild card there, but just bear in mind it, it performs extremely well with suppressor on it. I think that's still probably the best loadout for that gun. It's kind of like the AS Val, um, but to compare the two, uh, in the works did a better job than I could about comparing those two. But um, the AS Val 2, another weapon you're going to see here in a moment. Uh, extremely powerful weapon with the suppressor on. It's doing a minimum of 18 damage. I mean, that's that's incredible. That's, that's practically what assault weapons do with suppressor on. So again, keep this weapon in mind. I, I like a sniper loadout on this. I can do anything. I mean, it, either holographic sight, whatever. What have you. It doesn't matter what sight. It's kind of a big sight on this gun, but I just like the uh, zoom capability sometimes. But again, the advantages of having the suppressor cannot be underestimated. And I think you need to ask yourself in your gameplay, uh, and we should all be asking ourselves continually, no matter how experienced you are, what rank you are, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, what's your day-to-day -day average engagement in which you are face-to-face -face with a player? Look at that, C4. Was that a troll move? No. You see, I saw those guys all over there. I threw C4 down. I knew they'd be coming around there. I flanked around. I watched the mini-map. Watched that mini-map. And when I saw them on my C4, I detonated it. Is that a noob tactic? Ah, uh, hell no, my friends. That is not a noob tactic. That is, that's how you want to play this game. That's how support can dominate this game. You got to keep those kind of little tricks in your mind, keeping the enemy guessing. Look at this. I mean, again, I shoot one guy and nobody knows I'm coming. They're just running straight at you. Put them down. Uh, I was trying to make a hole in that wall to go through. I don't know why I didn't blow up, but uh. Anyway, guys, I, I hope I'm getting through to you about the advantages of, of the suppressor. Don't think the heavy barrels the answer to all your questions. More often than not, and again, Enemy this is just from my over. limited capability. I don't have the aiming. I don't have the aiming capabilities to make my bullets count for anything at 224 feet. Um, to me, having that that extra damage at that range really is not much. Um, so I caution you about devoting your your valuable assets on your weapon, or you got limited slots, make them count for something. Uh, if the if you need the flash suppressor, I'd recommend that for for recoil compensation. Um, however, in terms of tactical advantages, the suppressor also, which I'm failing to mention here, I'll go toe to toe with the knife trolls. What I'm failing to mention here too is the suppressor actually gives you a slight, just a slight, but it does give you a slight vertical uh, recoil reduction. It also gives you a slight aim down sight accuracy. So you're basically getting three benefits for the price of one. Aim down sight accuracy, recoil compensation, and the bombshell of them all, stealth capability. Uh, so to me, really, is this the best attachment in the game? I'm going to have to say it depends on the scenario, it depends on the game mode. But on your day-to-day, -day, everyday range engagements, I'm going to have to say it is. Uh, and I know it's personally huge changes. Uh, magic things happen when you pull out the suppressor. Now in this last clip here was, you know, a little troll moment maybe. But check out the advantages here when uh, the spawn camp. You know how we see this in Grand Bazaar. Look how quickly they'd kill, I think, five guys with this weapon. This is great for getting rid of these stalemates. I've said this, I don't know how many times before, guys. But use your equipment. I know there's other classes besides assault. But engineer, support... Recon, use your equipment and mortars again. I feel like people just they kind of give them a bad rap, but look at this. I mean, what's this? Quick 700 points right here, guys. I immediately just killed all the campage back there. I just joined this match too, by the way, at this point in time. I saw what was going on. I saw the stalemate, broke it instantly. I said, let's shake this up a little bit, guys. Come on, stop camping back there and immediately change the feel of the map and uh, or the match that is. And of course, Guys start flanking around. Guys start moving. When, when they're getting mortars dropped on the head, even though the thing's only doing like 40 damage. Uh, if they're wounded or if they just got revived, they're dead meat. So throw it out there. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Remember the suppressor. Lesson of the day.